Hey there guys, so today I wanted to actually take a look at a little program that someone actually suggested to me called Lossless Upscaler, and it's a program you can get off of Steam for right now. I mean, I paid like four bucks for it, and the idea behind it is that it actually, its more recent versions actually support FSR, which means that you can force FSR into game, and I decided to give it a try on Watch Dogs 2. Now, there are some caveats to this. Because this is not native support of FSR within the game, it actually has a much larger overhead. This is going to be very significant here because this really does not seem to be targeted towards APU systems. It seems to be a program that's really just meant for full-on GPUs. And I'll explain to you why in a bit. But right now what you're looking at the game running at is its native 1080p resolution with the lowest graphical setting and no AA whatsoever. So this is the most ideal scenario for 1080p performance. And as you can see, it's not great. It's not going to be a fully playable experience like this. The 1% lows are just dipping down way too much much and the frame times are kind of dancing around the place where you can't get away with playing like this if you really wanted to but I feel like you're going to have a overall better time at just dropping down to 720p and well that's where the lossless upscaler can come in because the game itself does not actually support FSR but if we can inject it in that might be able to improve the visual quality at 720p but really what matters is what is it going to do about performance and so here we have 720p with no upscaling whatsoever running on the game here and you can tell that the image itself is pretty blurry again we have no AA here and overall the visual quality of the game is, is definitely not great it doesn't look absolutely repulsive but it's definitely not a good looking game and especially the lack of AA is making a lot of the edges look very bad at these lower resolutions but in terms of providing us a playable FPS we are definitely getting that because now we're getting 1% lows that are only dropping down into the mid 30 with an FPS average that is in the high 40s and if you look at those frame times they are for the most part consistent they are definitely not the flattest you're definitely having a little bit of stutter here and there but it's nothing that is detrimental to the gaming experience and you could probably get away with playing like this but now if we jump into the program and we just have things set to the default settings mostly just auto and there is something interesting here because they do have an optimized renderer here now this optimized renderer is supposed to work for low-end system so we have the game running at 720p here in windowed mode which the upscaler is going to stretch out to 1080p and here you'll be able to see what it's performing like now visually to me at least it definitely looks a little better compared to 720p the problem is is that this really wants you to have aa on it really wants at least some form of aa though not really fxaa fxaa being just the cheapest form of aa is just visually repulsive a lot of the time and would make this look even worse but if we could have msaa it would really help improve the visual quality of the upscaling itself the problem is that this igpu just cannot provide a good experience with aa on really this program seems to mostly just be designed around full on gpus that will at least let you run anti-aliasing at at least some setting and even with this lower end render which provides at least a little bit of an improvement visually it still introduces a pretty significant drop in actual performance because if we compare these numbers to where we were at at just native 720p we're definitely taking a hit here because now our one percent lows are below 30 and our fps is struggling to get into the 40s we're mostly sticking to FPS in the 30s. And that really puts this in a awkward position because it looks a little bit better, but it's not enough really to drop you down to what I think is starting to get into more uncomfortable territory to play. So really overall, I'm a little disappointed to see how this is actually performing here, but it's really just one of those situations where the fact that the games just don't natively support FSR is just going to inherently introduce some overhead that is really going to put you into a position where you might not really want to play the game like this. I certainly found it more difficult to play like this than at just native 720p. Even though native 720p looked a little worse than this, I would rather have the smoother FPS. And it's definitely something that I've been messing around with a little bit now with a, a couple of games. And for the most part, it really just seems to introduce a lot of overhead and visually it isn't improving things enough to, I think, justify it on an APU system. Now, this on a full-on desktop PC is completely different. It's actually pretty 
pretty incredible and I've been using it with my RTX 2870 Super and it's actually been pretty great. I use I normally play on a 1440p monitor and the fact that now I can just run games at 1080p and have them upscale to 1440p and have it look pretty damn good is honestly pretty incredible. I really like it. But for these APU systems, it really just seems like they don't have the power to really render this properly. So I'm going to keep messing around with this program on a large variety of games. I want to see if there is any court like average experience where if the vast majority of the games actually work pretty well or if they're all going to end up running like this because at this point I've only tested two games it was this and I tested Far Cry 5 but the footage that I got of that is pretty much corrupted so it won't open up in Premiere but pretty much overall it's one of those things where I'm going to look into it I'm going to see if it's actually going to be something potentially viable for APUs but as it stands right now it really does not seem like that's the case and it's unfortunate because these are the systems that would benefit the most from FSR but it really just seems like developers have to natively support it because if you try to inject it like this you're going to run into issues apparently. I'm very tempted to just install SteamOS on one of these systems and just running it with Linux so that I can see if the fact that Proton supports natively injecting FSR through the Vulkan API might provide a better experience overall than this. Because if so, man, Linux gaming is starting to look very, very tempting. Now, obviously for certain titles, it's still just a no-go, but for the most part, it's actually pretty great. So definitely stay tuned for more of this program. Maybe not running on this specific chip but maybe we might try it on rdna 2's igpu you know the the 680m i haven't done a test on that one for a while mostly because that system it kind of just ended up becoming my main computer it's uh it's just so good like honestly the g14 is probably my favorite laptop of this year but this hp pavilion 13 also like the arrow 13 is kind of incredible like I, I feel like within the span of a couple of months i've just gotten two systems that i am struggling so hard to decide between the two which one I love more because the the G14 is pretty damn incredible but being a gaming laptop it does run pretty hot and the Aero 13 just being a 15 watt chip that does not let you go higher than that it runs so cool it runs so quiet the battery life on it just lasts me all day and it has a 16 by 10 screen but I'm definitely going to be checking out the 680M running with this program but anyways I will catch you guys in the next one